Is there, <coughs> is there any scenario in, you, in which you see us addressing both questions? Uh, Assume we... Again, Your Honor, I think we wouldn't presuppose to suggest how the court should resolve the case. We, I think, have three independent ways that, that we... No, I know, and they're each independent. I'm asking a different question. Is there any way we reach both? Um, well, if the court were to disagree with us on one, I think it would have to, to reach the other. Alternatively, if the court agrees with us on, on all of the points, I think it would be at the court's discretion if it believes that bringing guidance to the system here would warrant resolving both the jurisdictional question and, and the statutory question. So I, I, I think it would be you know, at, the, at the court's election, depending on how it wishes to resolve the issue. I, I have a very simple view. Uh, I know we've been trying hard to bring clarity to this area of jurisdiction or not. And you kept saying the plausibility argument. Um, and you're right, because it's strange. It's strange language, because it seems addressed to the court, but on an issue where it's relying on the litigant to exhaust, which is very different than most jurisdictional cases that have to do with subject matter classifications, correct? The court can't hear certain types of issues. And it has nothing to do with what the litigant does or doesn't do. That, I, I entirely agree, Your Honor. I think that's what this court's Pacek case teaches, which is if the, the restriction goes to something substantive about the nature of the claim, some substantive category, that context suggests it is more likely the court speaking of jurisdiction. Rather, when Pacek gives exhaustion as a specific example, and it goes to the procedure of how those claims are, are to be addressed, that is at least thumb on the scale towards thinking it's not a jurisdictional uh, uh, requirement. So what you're basically saying, both of you could have good arguments, as you do, but in that case, the tie is against jurisdiction. And again, in this specific statute, when Congress wanted to speak about jurisdiction, it had the express language at hand. It used it a it lot. It would have been very easy to do this one. The court has no jurisdiction to review, and A and B would remain exactly the same, correct? In provisions above and below, Congress did exactly that. It revised this language. It didn't use the same language that it used And everywhere. Stone did not speak about uh, exhaustion. Stone talked about jurisdiction with respect to time limits, correct? Yes, Your Honor. So there is no holding by us that exhaustion is jurisdictional? Correct. We agree, Your Honor. Justice Kagan? 